here I have um, had the metal cool down. It's really beautiful oxides that are here. Um, and on this side, there's some of this black that's on here. This was all black. And then when I um, rinsed it, a lot of it flaked off. You wanna make sure that you've gotten, if you're not gonna pickle this and it's not a sterling silver piece, you just wanna make sure that all the oxides, black oxides are off and that you don't have them all over the counter. These oxides are what end up in your quenching bowl. And remember that we're now sifting our quenching water into a filter so that we're not putting it down the drain. So um, that's another thing to take care of on here. Um, one of the things that I say to my students all the time is, is they go, is this a meal? And I'll go do the bend test. So if I can bend this with my bare hands, I know it's a meal. So the bend test is the best way. What I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna sink this, begin sinking this piece. This is a um, really nice leather. My first sandbag was a pair of my Levi jeans that I cut up, worked great for a long time. You can see that this is starting to be cut. So making sure that your edges are filed so that it doesn't cut the leather is really important. Um, I'm gonna set this here. I'm gonna start with this hammer. It's a nylon hammer. And I'm gonna start on the outside. And I think I'm gonna go counterclockwise today. I'm gonna work into the center. And then I'm gonna spiral back out. So I'm gonna hold it here. And I'm using the big part of the head because then I don't have to hammer as many times. Can you see how this is sinking down in? I've been told that before people use sandbags, they use lead blocks and the lead would squish underneath it. We don't want to be handling lead. So all the way around. Now I'm going to go in a little bit. happening is my hammer is hammering in the exact same place. My left hand, which is my non-dominant hand, is actually doing the most important work. It's doing the moving. And so I've got about this much and you can see that it's irregular a little bit. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to go back what you don't want to do is have these fold over and wrinkle. So as I'm coming around, I'm going to make sure that I knock them back out. You can see that I'm getting this nice dish here. Sometimes this gets too deep. And then you need to just kind of fluff back up the, um, the sandbag. And when I do this, I remember the first time I did it, I thought, I want to do this for a living. I have no idea why I said that, but here I am. Um, but you can see it's already starting to change shape on you, and we'll be able to alter it. And I'm going to come around. I could have used a steel hammer on it to shape it. This is just going to, for the demo, you're going to see me not have to hammer as much. to make this symmetrical and can you see it's wanting to do this so a lot of times I'll just put it here and press it back down set it down look around see where whether it's down or not okay so I got it this far along um, you're probably going to want a deeper bowl for your enamel piece so you would take this now 
and go and kneel it upright like this and then sink it again. And to get a hemisphere, it might take four or five annealings. But what I want to show you now is um, how to um, smooth out the surface. And these are what are called stakes. So this is a big, nice one that we use for a lot of bowl forms. We've got the mushroom steak, and then this is a um, oval, if your piece is gonna be oval. And I'm gonna take and look at this and see if it has the same profile. And it pretty much does. When you start getting deeper, if you use this steak, it's gonna flatten it back out. So I remember John Marshall showing me, you hold it up and you look to see if the surface of this is the same as this. I could get away with using this, but I would just have to move this around more. I think for the demo, I just want to show you, I'm going to put it on the mushroom steak. This is not real clean, but if I start getting some copper oxides onto this, just take some steel wool and we can clean it off. But I'm going to set it on here and I can use a rawhide mallet. If I don't want to put it, say this piece had a, an etched texture or a roll printed texture on it, working with the, the nylon hammer in the bag would keep me from losing that. Um, so if I wanted to not lose a, a texture that was on this, I would use a rawhide mallet and I'm going to go grab the right one. back with a nylon, not a rawhide. And when you do the um, finish work on this to smooth it all out, you want to basically do the same thing we were doing here, work with the hammer in the same place. So I'm just going to start. And I'm moving the metal around, not the hammer. coloration of the oxides. If I were going to use a transparent enamel, I just wouldn't anneal it and I would keep it there. When I went to Tosco, Mexico, they don't even use pickle and they got this beautiful patina. So that's another reason sometimes why not to pickle. So now I'm going to try to clean up the edge. I'm not going to be stretching and making my edge irregular, which is also nice. If I were planishing, I would not go all the way to the edge with the steel hammer. But the more random you work, the smoother the surface is going to be. And the randomness doesn't come from me sitting over here and around working in one place. Okay, I'm going to look at it now and uh, our hands can feel mistakes better than our eyes. And when I rub my hand around this, it's feeling pretty good. There's a little wobble there. And piece doesn't have to be perfect, but it's nice to know how to make it perfect. And so you can see I'm coming along. There's another divot. So something you might want to do that I did in the beginning is I would put a mark somewhere on my piece because when you go around, you kind of lose track of where you are. But now that's a pretty even piece. You can set it on the table and then measure all the way around to see how it's doing. I don't have a base on it yet. 
Um, but I'm going to continue sinking this. Um, so now it's time for me to take it back and anneal it. And I'll do the same thing I did, but this time don't put it this way on the on the um, annealing pan because these edges are the edges that need to get the softest. Do it this way. And then you'll be able to make sure that what you're trying to really move is, is also evenly annealed. This has the least amount of contact on the pumice rock. This is going to have the most amount of contact on the pumice rock, which is going to suck heat away. 